Williams. In three, two, one. Boom. 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 And we're live. Hold on real, real fast. Let me just uh, send a quick tweet and let the people know that we're live. Boom. We're live. Leander, what's going on in El Caney's world? Anything mm -hmm. that you could share with us? Any exciting things that you want to talk about today? Can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm generally He's taking the think. fifth. His uh, his shrooms kicked in. Yeah, I'm generally trying to think of something exciting. Mm, yeah. Not really. Come We're on. Going to, you know, my wife is going to try. Is trying to force us into some really tr horrific new vegetarian diet. She's also throwing out everything we own. You mean like food or just in general? Just in general, like all of our possessions. <laughs> she's got. She's she's been she's been radicalized on YouTube, right? She got into. She was into Marie Kondo, the whole art of tidying up. You know, do you love it or not? Uh -huh. Decluttering because there was a lot of clutter in the house yeah so then she started watching these things and then on youtube it increasingly like showed her more and more radical stuff you know so now she's following this this crazy woman who who gets rid of everything if you haven't used it in the last six minutes chuck it out god sounds like my wife and it's like everything on the counter the kitchen countertop has to be cleaned off and put in like drawers or, or counters somewhere so you know the toaster i make some toast in the morning i gotta put the toaster unplug it Put it in a, in a cupboard <laughs> or a drawer, you know, what? out of the way when I'm that done with it. That is too much. It is too much. And so now she's chucking everything out. And, of course, there's a lot of my stuff, too. Love to throw away my possessions. Right. Oh, sure. What's the percent? Where would you put the percentage at? Your stuff versus her stuff versus the kids' stuff. Well, because I complained, and I actually dug a couple of things out of the trash and brought them back into the house. Um, <laughs> but, uh, in the dead of the night? Yeah. Well, no, I, did, I just made a had to go outside and rage your own. I can't believe you threw out my, you know, puffco. <laughs> well, that that uh, had to be thrown out, right? Because it's well, they're broken. Broken, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm holding out hope. <laughs> you should get some duct that tape. See if you can fix it. I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna fix it somehow. Yeah. So I don't know. That that's, that's been going on. Um, you know, trying to get the kids, trying to kids to get jobs. That's not good. My son was about to get a job, and then they they re upped his unemployment. So he's like. Yeah, well, you know, my motivation just Why well, do that? So. Yeah, if I could just not work. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I could just not work, I'd prefer to just do that, <laughs> you know? He's but been still coming here. He's, he's been doing his resume and stuff. I think he's kind of like, he's he's keen to join the workforce. He just graduated college, you know, last year, so. Yeah, well, now's kind of a tough time to get a job, isn't it? Because. Well, last year was time. a tough time. I think now's, now's a good time. You know, things are starting to open back up. Oh, yeah. People are hiring like crazy. Um, oh shoot! Seems... Then what's his excuse? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Why don't you hire him to to uh, be a uh, a worker in the Cultimac Empire? Well, he was. He was working for me all last year, but it was just he was so completely useless that um, <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> that he had to be sure to put a link to this on his resumes that he sends in. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> I'm so lazy. Not even my dad would give <laughs> me a job. Testimonial. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> he's just got to find something that he loves he's got to find he the, the right motivation he, he, he was doing setups posts and i thought he was doing a pretty good job i mean he did him he did him okay um but you know it really wasn't his his passion so yeah well maybe he can land a job with apple insider <laughs> mac, <laughs> mac rumors <laughs> You don't want to have your kids working for you, you know, because I don't want to be yelling at the kids. You know, I yell them at home, you know, to tidy up his room or, you know, f f clean up the kitchen or whatever. And then yelling at him at work, too. It's yeah. like, it's just like yell, yell, yell. You know, I didn't want to be doing that. Yeah. If he's living with you, too, then you definitely don't yeah, want to be working right. with him as well. That's a little that's a little too much. I was trying to say, you know, one day, son, all of this will be yours. You know? <laughs> <laughs> But he was, as, yeah. as, as, as you make a hand gesture toward the, the giant stack of Steve Jobs books that are all dusty with cobwebs all over them. And all the stuff I dug out the dumpster. Yeah. They're saving up for a wheelbarrow. Yeah, all the stuff you recovered from the dumpster that your wife threw away. As you look on, on it proudly. He wasn't very enticed, unfortunately. <laughs> all right, let's see here. Shout out to Zach Hicks. Zach Hicks, you know what to do. Remember, be ruthless. Be honest and unmerciful. That's a tip that I live by. Shout out to Dan DeWitt. We've got Chase McLean. 
He's here. Oh, he's talking about the Puffco Prince. No longer. His uh his princehood has been revoked because he let uh, somebody use the Puffco, and that person was irresponsible with the Puffco, and now it's broken. Oh, shoot, Stephen Bird from Sydney. Holy moly. People love the Puffco King. Ulysses is here. <laughs> what? Uh, he think... calls you the Puffco King. The Puffco, the Puffco Prince, the Puffco King. <laughs> and uh, shout out to Torquil. Torquil Dewar. Dewar. Wow, look at that name. It's like a bad guy from a Borderlands game. Greg Mitz. The Marines are hiring. We talked about Lewis being a great fit for a drill sergeant for the Marines. You'd never see him coming. And he'd be like like Joe Pesci, you know, where he's uh, kind of unassuming until he gets up in your face, like two feet below you, and just starts barking upwards. <laughs> Spit flying everywhere. Spittle going everywhere in a big old plume. Those are the guys that are the most effective. <clears throat> Level remixes here. All right, guys, we got a lot of stuff to talk about, as you well know. We got all sorts of uh, Apple information to cover. Boy, is is that a teaser or what? We have Apple information to cover. We've got some details on the uh, the next generation MacBook Pros. So we're going to dive into it. We'll tell you everything that we know. Plus, pre-orders are going live tomorrow for everything that was announced at the Spring Loaded events. Uh, so we'll talk about all of that great stuff and so much more. We got a lot in store for you guys. Let me queue up. Where is she? Where's the beautiful Mrs. D? Is she there? Mrs. D! <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. D! <laughs> we are ready for you. Oh, is it Thursday already? It sure is. It's time to get going. The people are amped up. They're ready to hear your salutations so that uh, we can get this show going. <laughs> I'm ready. All right, well, let me get this thing rolling. Let me cue up the music here, Mrs. D, and then it's all you. In three, two. Hello, and welcome to Hocasty Fest. 30 plus minute alpha conversation you're going to hear all week long. I'm your host, Airphone Elijah. Joining me today, he's been tased so many times by Apple campus security, he's built up a tolerance. Now it takes at least three <laughs> simultaneous tasers to bring him down and get him off the campus. He's the brother of Cultivac. Leanna Kitty is here. <laughs> also with us. Now that lockdown restrictions have relaxed, he's letting the Cultimac riders out of their pens for daily exercise, 30 minutes of yard activity. They walk around, they stretch, they peck at bugs and other varmints. They're a lot happier. He's the managing editor of Cultimac. Lewis Wallace is here. I think that's fair. I think it's I think it's fair. It's amazing what a little sunshine and digging with your feet and pecking at bugs. And they're, they're getting, getting so much more protein D. now, you know? So it's like <laughs> their energy levels are just oh, tip top. Roof. Yeah, which clearly they needed a little pick-me-up after today's headline faux pas. We found a little headline error before we went live. It was a serious little error that, um, <clears throat> I'll be honest, be spoken of. someone's going to be disciplined severely for, for that mistake. <laughs> Lewis was untying his shoe and getting ready to apply it to a writer's <laughs> face before we went live. All right, guys. Well, let's see here. Let's just dive right into it here because we got a lot of stuff to talk about. Did my mouse just die? Oh, okay, good. I was like, what the oh, heck? Dear no, it didn't. It didn't. But I, you know what's funny is I feel like that always happens. I have a rechargeable mouse and keyboard, and I feel like on cult cast days, it's always when the keyboard dies. It's always Thursday that I start getting the blinking red light. But it looks like we're still going. Okay, so first of all, uh, we have new MacBook Pros on the way. And... You all know that my deep analytical brain is good at bringing all the puzzle pieces together and presenting you with the future. I did it with the IMAX. It's about to happen again today. We're getting new <laughs> MacBook Pros. They're oh, coming no. at they're coming at WWDC. You so what's that? Something backwards and read it through the green filter. And... <laughs> if you squint your eyes and turn the clue <laughs> upside down and then tilt your head to forty five degrees, you'll see the evidence. Now I have no I have no invite to show you today but by pure analytical prowess i have put together the details that tim cook doesn't want you to see and i've unraveled the mystery and i will share it with all, all of you here today and then also we have a bunch of new apple stuff going on uh pre-sale tomorrow so we'll talk about that and we we don't have a solid launch date from apple but one tipster has 
giving us some details on when you can actually expect your Apple products to ship. So we will touch on that. We also have to talk about Apple's absolutely bonkers quarter yesterday. And then their stock price just went up. If you saw my tweets, you know I was pretty excited because I was like, if anyone needs me, I'll be in Monaco sipping champagne with the other princes and uh, <laughs> fantastically wealthy people because Apple stock shot straight up. And then, of course, today it plummeted far down to the ground where uh, it will probably live until the next record-breaking quarter where nothing will happen. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to do a little Apple stock adventure update. For those of you that don't know, I own uh, a lot of Apple stock, over $100,000 worth. So I will talk about that. I will tell you exactly how much it's worth today since some of you really like hearing that kind of stuff. And then we got a new update to iOS which we will touch on because some really great features made their way into the new version of iOS. And one of them in particular is something that I've been using for three weeks, and it's life-changing. And that's not just clickbait. Well, it is a little bit clickbaity, but it's also true. It is life-changing. Before we dive in, Lewis, would you like to give us a little promo on the Cult of Mac store oh. situation? Do you have anything? Let's, let's see how long it takes to load. Let's see. Uh, well, how about this? I'll load it, and then you can just Oh, begin. my God. Did it work right away? Uh, you know what? <laughs> I typed I, – for a second, I typed in store.coldamac.com, but for some reason it resolved to store.com, com, and uh, I was like, oh, my God, what in the world it is actually that? Worked. No, you just got the cast version. That's what happened. Wait a minute. Okay. Whew, there we go. Whew. Okay. Well, I have it. I have it up. So let's Shooey start. Dog. Start pitching something. I was a little bit nervous there. there because it didn't look anything like the Cult of Mac store, which <laughs> is just brimming with fantastic accessories for every Apple device that you possibly have, except for Apple Car. You know, there's no. You gotta get some skins yet. going for that. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, you know what? Um, it might be too late for this actually, but uh, this is our fifth birthday with the Cult of Mac store, right? And if wow. You had if you had purchase something in the store you probably got a little little uh, special gift in your email yesterday but it's too late if you didn't check it out oh, geez. <laughs> the promo well let's not talk about <laughs> promos that have already expired lewis <laughs> oh yeah well they we've always got the cult cast promo that's almost as good as the birthday yeah. present you missed but that that um, birthday present was only good for people who had already purchased something right right it's okay, for well, people they already who, know about it yeah, if they were looking in their inbox. Let's Lewis, hope they Lewis, did. marketing. I know it's marketing a bummer. Tip. It's, a, it's a, <laughs> I, you know, it's fear you can't of having promote missed out. something it's that not is FOMO. It's it's past tense FOMO. <laughs> it's, it's POMO. You've already missed out. <laughs> 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 yeah, sure you don't you promote something post, right? that is already expired. Okay, let's <laughs> let's reboot. Start I'm again. just saying, buy something now, and you know, maybe a year from now. Oh, wait a <laughs> second! Here, we'll send you another sixth one. birthday. Oh, that's boy. great. Yeah, just make sure you get something in the next twelve months. And actually, somebody is asking Christopher Gavin, any Air Tags holders? You guys got to have some Air Tags holders on the way, you know right? What? I I don't think that uh, we have got any of those in there yet. But I mean, certainly there's going to be a, a ton of things, man. I can't wait till somebody makes like a iPad or iPod iPod Pro case that that holds those. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't think we actually have any of those in there yet, but, uh, I know we will as soon as they become available and we can suss them out and figure out which ones are good and which ones are, you know, not so good. Yeah. Those are going to be popular. We'll be having the good ones, by the way, just to clarify, the good, ones, yeah. uh, the good ones will be in the cult of Mac store. Yep. Not that 50 cents Amazon trash <laughs> that you find online that, you know, came out of it's, a back alley in Shanghai. That's going to fall single apart. Use. Yeah. Single <laughs> use. Exactly. <laughs> So we got all sorts of cool accessories. I'm looking at the uh, Elago R4 Retro Apple TV remote. They're going to have to update this for the new remote that's uh, that's going on sale Friday, <laughs> April 30th, which I'm probably going to buy. Need it. What's that? I don't think you're going to need it because uh, that thing takes care. That thing actually solves the big problem that you have with the old Siri remote or the, the current Siri remote, right? Which is knowing makes, what direction you're looking yeah, at. Yeah. yeah, like you'll never again go, which, you know, ding, 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 trying to push the wrong end of the thing like a moron which i've done <laughs> so many times it's just uh it, it was embarrassing i put that thing on completely uh completely took care of that problem i don't sit around on my couch going why isn't it working oh man that that new apple tv remote we'll talk about it here in a second 
So I'm sure everyone watching knows we got a new Apple TV 4K on the way. And it looks cool, but I think more than the actual Apple TV 4K, I'm excited about the remote. And they completely revamped the remotes, which I'm showing on the screen right now. You got a power button at the top, so you can turn your TV on and off now. You don't need to use your TV remote, which is, you know, right now I have to have two remotes. One for the TV and then one for the Apple TV. So once I got the TV on, then I go to the Apple TV remote, and I can use that from then on. But, but uh, no longer. You can turn your TV on and off. You can mute your TV if you want. You can uh, pause. It has a back button now. So instead of that, that, that menu button that was there that you never really knew what it did, now you have a back button and you have this screen button, which I guess is like the home screen of the app you're on. I still don't know what this button is for. But I think my favorite feature is this really great iPad or excuse me, iPod-esque wheel. And you can I think you can spin it around or maybe it's probably touch, I'm guessing. It's touch. You swirl around you the edge. Swirl it around. That's that's a better way of putting it. And then you can, you know, track through your content and go back and forth, which is going to be so useful, man. I I uh, I <laughs> Buster gave me uh, access to his HBO account this weekend. So my, so my family was out of town this last weekend, which was so weird because once you have kids, especially when you have as many kids as I do, Leander, you probably know what I'm talking about. You're so engrossed in the day-to-day activities of your family that if they ever leave, you don't really know what to do with yourself. You know, you know what I'm yeah. talking about? Oh, uh-huh, totally. Yeah, yeah. I'm completely lost. Yeah, I'm totally lost. So when they leave, I think I'm going to get all this stuff done. But instead, <laughs> I'm in I'm in that mode where you're sitting in front of Netflix trying to decide what to watch, except it lasts for three days. It's I just watched, me sitting on the couch yeah, doing yeah. that, you know? Yeah, right. I watched like four seasons of The Wire when they were away the last time. <laughs> That's what I did. So Buster gave me access to no his, his HBO account. I didn't watch The Wire. Oh. But uh, Buster gave me access to his HBO account. And I was perusing through it, just trying to figure out what to watch. And then I stumbled into Westworld. And I was like, you know, I've I've always wanted to watch this show. So I'll just just watch one episode, right? I ended up completing the entire first season within 24 hours. I was completely done with it. And those episodes are, I think, an hour plus long. So I watched eight or nine hours of content in, uh, you know, how many many waking hours is that? Like 16? It's it's basically all... It's a pretty high percentage. (laughs) Dude, that show... Holy moly! Have you guys seen Westworld? Yeah, 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 yeah. It, I was frustrated with it to be honest, because it came so close to being great quite a few times, didn't it? This some ton of it is great, but a ton of it was frustrating too. I, I I've only gotten through the first season, and it was incredible, like engaging, gripping. Every episode ended with such a hook that I just couldn't. I couldn't get myself to break away from it and eat or go to the bathroom or anything. So I just had like a Home Depot bucket, right? With a hose I could attach to go. And then like bags of chips placed strategically all over the couch and uh, around me so I didn't have to get up. And that show was brutal, though. I, it was Some of the scenes were really hard to watch. I loved it. I feel like I'm, I'm going off into a, like a really great tangent here. So let's get back into the... Uh, the Apple stuff. I don't even know what we were talking about. Oh yeah, we were talking about the remote and how. Yeah, that's I'm right. I'm guessing how it failed you. Uh, well, actually, I I don't hate it as much as a lot of people, but I think <laughs> the new remote is such a huge a huge improvement. But uh, let's talk about that, Lewis, because we have uh, an update. At least it seems like for some of this stuff on because we know it's going on presale tomorrow, April thirtieth. And why don't you tell us what is going on pre-sale, just so people are reminded, and then <coughs> what we think about when they'll actually get that stuff. Well, you got the uh, new iMac, seven amazing colors in the M1 chip. You got the iPad Pro models with the M1 chip, and the larger one has the uh, mini LED screen, which some people are super psyched about. Uh, and the uh, faster Apple TV 4K with the remote that you can't stop going on and on about because you're in love with it. So these things go on sale tomorrow for pre-sale. And then, uh, but but so far, Apple's been sort of cagey about when they're actually arriving. I think it says something like uh, available uh, second half of May. But it, it looks like... Um, we may know exactly when. It, it, it looks like they're going to arrive on May 21. That's what uh, John Prosser, our favorite leaker, uh, says with regard to the iPad Pro and the Apple TV 4K. Uh, and then 
just today, Apple sent out a press release talking about these new products, reminding everybody that they're going to be going on sale. And uh, there's a little clue in there that uh, the IMAX might arrive on that day as well, because oh, there, you know, I guess somebody found in the metadata that it says April, or, sorry, May 21 is the date that the uh, IMAX will be arriving. So what? what? <laughs> How, how, how exactly is that buried in the metadata? In the page well, metadata? Have, I, I, yeah, I mean, I. <laughs> thanks for asking me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Lewis, could know. you first explain to us <laughs> what assuming, metadata is and how it was? Uh, just, it was on. It w- was this on the website, right? I'm guessing it was on the website, and you just look at the source of the w- website. Okay, right? look, I, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it live. I just do up, it live. I'm doing it live. Under your tie, Lewis. I, I brought up the developer mode. I'm going to guess this is what they're talking about. I'm just going to search for iMac here. Can I search for iMac? No, that's not it. All new yeah, search iMac. For the, search for the date. You're going to have more here's, luck with that. You think so? Here's the... Yeah, never mind. These are all just links. <laughs> this is, abandoned ship. This is terrible content. I'm just searching for iMac <laughs> in, the, uh, in the metadata, and all I'm bringing up is matches with um, different links. That's... Uh, well, sh- yeah, go ahead. Surely... Surely uh, they've changed that by now, right? I mean, yeah, you're probably right. They probably would have updated it. Yeah, okay. Although, Aban- abandoned ship, back to Lewis. That they, uh, there was something else that they <laughs> accidentally. Oh yeah, Siri telling the date of the uh, thing, right? It's like what? You mean the I guess the date of the uh, spring loaded event, event, right? Date of the event, yeah. Oh, dude, that 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 was a catastrophic, hilarious error. How does that happen? They just have so many pieces to to orchestrate now. It's just getting to be more and more difficult for them to actually make sure that everything is in sync. Everybody's... uh, They need to hire Justin Timberlake to run the show. That's the only way it's going to work. It doesn't say May 21 anymore. Now it says second half of May. That is what I see in the metadata. Anyway, uh, so that looks pretty solid. I mean, that's two indicators that May 21 is the actual release date. It makes sense, right? I mean, these things... uh, they go up on sale tomorrow. That's three weeks after they uh, go on sa- sale. Uh, it's a Friday, I think, isn't it? Oh, gee, I didn't check that either. <laughs> Are you one of those uh, math people who can just figure out, like, oh, exactly how many? Like, you, you give them a date, and they can tell you what, what well, day of the week it lands on. I am not one yeah, of those people. Yeah, 21 divided by 7 is 3, so. That's true. You're right. That is true. Leander is right about that. Have you guys ever yeah. seen any content of the actual Rain Man and what he's like? Have you ever seen any interviews with anything w- with that guy? No. Dustin Hoffman? No. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know with Dustin Hoffman, the, the actual Rain Man? Dude, I saw you a- You mean the guy they based the movie on? The guy they based Rain Man off of? He's probably in, in his 60s now, and um, he lives with his father because he's not able to take care of himself. But, I, I, I mean, oh, the, word, the, the word savant is, is, I don't even think, appropriate for this guy. I mean, he basically can recall, I think they said, like, 99% of all information that he's interacted with from books. So his dad will take him to the library, and, and he, get, he just spends his day reading books. And then he's like a computer. You can just ask him anything about anything historical. And if he's read the book, he will literally uh, re- regurgitate exactly the like fact. That. Your brother's like that? He's got amazing retention. Yeah, just he can re- remember almost anything and everything that's ever went through his head. Does wow. he remember where in books like things happen? Because because the Rain Man guy, I, f- I forget his name, but he would tell you. I think even what pages things happened on. Huh. I haven't asked him that. I will. That it's Yeah. Well, why don't you have uh, your brother working for Colt Mac? That's the kind of power, mental prowess you need well, there. I, I did for a bit. That also was a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only Katie that uh, that can hold the reins uh, uh, of that ship. Yeah, it's it's really it's it's really unbelievable because you know that most of us probably have that kind of potential that well, there's a theory to recall that, you know, things, everyone... but he he actually is able to access it. You know. One of the theories of cognition is that you know you, you all of this all of us log all this information. We just can't access it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like yeah. everything you've ever read and watched and seen is somewhere in your noggin. <laughs> but you just can't you just can't go back and get it, get, retrieve it. But what, these people can. What did you have for lunch yesterday? Oh, uh, well, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the Rain Man's file system is like a bunch of organized shell. It's almost like an Amazon <laughs> warehouse, right? Everything's organized perfectly, and the computer systems know where everything is. And my brain is more like, a vast ocean where 
everything is in there, but it's all just kind of like floating around, and some of it has like sifted to the bottom. So like you can find it, but you'll probably need a boat. It's gonna take you a month. You might need a uh, a full on uh, scuba diving suit to like go down to the bottom and like like bury unbury it out of the muck. So it's all in there, but it takes me a little while to actually well, go and get it. There's a great party trick you you can call, uh, you can practice um, where you you can recall like a really long list of words. Um, that someone gives to you, like if someone give you will give you a list of you know, normally if someone lists out a list of words, you remember like the first four or five, then there'll be a big gap, and then you'll remember the last two or three. Um, but there's this technique called the method of loci, which the great ancient Greek and Roman senators used to use to remember their long speeches, and they were able to give speeches for like eight hours long, almost perfectly because they would in their in their minds they would um, imagine somewhere that they were familiar with, like a walk or their house, and they have all these distinct locations. So if you took a walk through your house, you know, you could you could say, okay, here's the couch, here's the window, here's the door, here's the kitchen. And then if you put these things you want to remember, you imagine them in those places. And it's really amazing if you just, you huh. can do this in real time. Like you can, someone will read off a list of words, especially if they're concrete words, you know, like nouns uh, or, or, uh, or objects. You can imagine those objects in those locations and then effortlessly you can go back and recall them. It's really is astonishing because you can just see them there, and it's like going back and 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 see, you know just you just you just recall what you see. Dude, I need it really to do some amazing. more research into this because the, the memory palace. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. The memory palace. Yeah, Me- method of loci. It's called method of loci. Okay, I'm gonna have to check into this. I saw a TED talk actually on a guy who was talking about he was like some memory champion, and he would basically memorize cards in a deck and then tell you exactly which cards were which, and he had also entered some kind of memory competition where he was reciting the numbers in pi, and I forget how many he got to. It was like 100 or 200 or something. It was insane. Yeah. And basically what he did was he associated every kind of card or number with something from a story. And so as he was trying to memorize these, he was basically just building out a story that he could recall because humans are really good at remembering stories. Yeah, and so instead of like actually like remember the card, he would just remember the narrative, and then the right. narrative would tell him which card was coming after which. And he had no special superhero brain, but he was able to, with using this methodology, somehow build out his memory so he could remember all sorts of obscure things. I don't know if it actually works with normal things in your life, like <laughs> maybe only remembering the order of cards. <laughs> Yeah, right. which is cool, which is pretty cool, but not in the exact kind of memory that that I I I need. Anyway, so if you order something tomorrow, you'll probably get it May twenty first. Are you guys going to be ordering anything? Any uh, any biters on any of this stuff? <laughs> biters, <laughs> nothing. Oh, God. Come on, it's I know you're a biter. One of the remotes, kind of tempting. I just am very curious how it works. It's it's tempting. To buy an iMac, but like Leander, I'm kind of going. Geez, I'd really rather have one with a bigger screen. Well, plus you I know, so we're probably so in love that. with the horrible slow MacBook Pro. You, what you, uh, you do love, seem to love it. You, you are a masochist, Lewis. You seem to love the pain. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? You ordering a? You're not ordering a iMac, are you? No, I'm not going to get the iMac. It, you know, wait. as powerful and incredible as the iMac is, I, I'm waiting for WWDC. Because I think that's where my machines are going to be announced. In fact, I'm almost certain of it, and we'll talk about that here in a second. I am a little, I am a little curious about the, the the iPhone 12, the purple iPhone 12, just because, dude, my freaking iPhone 11 Pro, I'm having so many problems with it. What? It just, it needs to be wiped. I need, I need to wipe it. I, I'm just not getting notifications. By the way, for any any of you who've sent me messages on Twitter or in Patreon or something, I just don't get notifications. I keep turning notifications on and off. I keep resetting my phone. And when I reset my phone, I'll get notifications for like a short time. And then they just stop. I don't get Twitter notifications. I don't get messages notifications. I just don't get notifications. And I don't know why it's driving me crazy. I think it has something to do with the fact that my iPhone is completely out of storage space. I have to keep removing things manually. <laughs> Dude, it makes me so mad. I spent a thousand dollars for this phone. Sixty four gigs. It's a it's a slap to the Should've face. Eleven hundred. What is it? Full of chicken videos and actually <laughs> not all chickens. There's rabbits too. Rabbits too. Yeah, yeah. Maybe the dog one. I do have I do have like a ten minute long rabbit video I could show you. And there's no talking whatsoever. It's just my rabbits walking around their cage. 
and then I went in there. It's actually kind of soothing. It's like ASMR. I went into their little cage and I just hand fed them carrots. So for those of that don't know what we're talking about, uh, my house is turning into a farm. We got chickens, which I brought one live on the air and it tried to attack me and kill me. And then we just recently got uh, rabbits too. So we have two little bunnies. They're such sweet little animals. I just go in there with my carrot and they just eat the carrot right out of my hand. And you can hear all the crunching, and then there's like the chickens gobbling in the background because they want the carrots too, but I'm not giving them to the, the carrots. So there's also all sorts of like farm noises. So I have like a 10 minute long video, and and uh, I had a video stop the other day, and I was like, why did the video stop? Well, I was out of storage, and this just keeps happening to me. I just keep running out of storage. So I really need more storage space. Have you done all the things to like enable it to you know offload apps and? I freaking hate that. that. I, I hate. I hate offloading apps. I did do that for a little while, but the problem is not offloading apps. The problem is there's no easy way to delete the cache from all your different apps. So your all your apps store information on your iPhone, and there's no easy way to get rid of that cache. So I went in, and Twitter was taking like a gig and a half. Try iMazing. Gig and a half. Oh, really? Do they have an iPhone app that would actually fix that problem? I, you know, I'm making this up as we go along, but I think they do. Oh man, I should check that out because what the only way that you can delete an app's cache is to delete the app off your phone entirely and then reinstall it. And so that's what I had to do because the other option is you turn on, um, you can turn on offloading apps, but that only offloads the app itself, which doesn't take up that much storage space. It's the data and the, and the cache that takes up mm. a lot of space. And what's annoying is is if you turn on offload apps, you'll be out trying to use your phone and you'll go to use an app and the app's just not there anymore. And that happens right. all the time. So all your favorite apps are just always gone. And finally, I was like, this is the most annoying thing. I can't stand this anymore. So I turned it off. I just need a phone with more storage. But Yeah, didn't, didn't we discuss this? I mean, I think a wise man once said, you can never get the 64 gigabyte pro phone. Yeah, well, screw that guy. <laughs> oh, he was right. <laughs> Yeah, 64 gigs is is ridiculous. It just makes me mad that Apple charges $1,000 for a phone with, with 64 gigs. Now, they don't do this anymore. I think the base is 128 finally. But what a slap to the to the face and in the marble bag to get a phone <laughs> that costs $1,000 with 64 gigabytes. And this is this is one of App, Apple's perennial problems is they they really skimp on the storage space in, in an effort to nickel and dime you, which just really makes me mad, dude. It's like, come on, $1,000 for a phone? At least give us a decent amount of storage. If, if you're talking about the iPhone 11, then I would understand. It's like okay, it's the iPhone 11. It's 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 like the cheaper phone. But this is your pro your pro level phone. Anyway, sorry. I, I have you already know how I feel about this. So I won't I won't uh, go on any further. So I need a new phone because my phone keeps running out of space. Even though the phone is fine, it's just the storage space that is is probably the main problem. So that's tempting. But other than that, it's just going to be the. Uh, the Apple TV remote that I'm probably going to get. And then air tags, of course. So I'm going to pop into the uh, Apple store tomorrow and, um, and get some air tags. So I don't want to, you know, you know, break your heart or anything. You, you say you're going to pop into the store or the online store. You're I'm going go to go to the physical store. I'm going to go to the physical store. Oh, okay. I got yeah. It. Because I, they have them. The, so iPhone, I figure out... the purple one already went on sale, man. Are they even available now? I don't know. Uh, the purple one, I think starts shipping tomorrow. So you just, you just like go pick one up in person? Is that what you're saying? Well, I'm talking about AirTags, but yes. Yeah, okay. All right. Sorry. Actually, I I'll just, have to look at the pre-order dates. I'm not. Did the iPhone 12 yeah, purple yeah. already? It's already on. Sorry. Okay, then I think yeah, it delivers it's tomorrow. To be, that's, that's the one that's going to be arriving tomorrow with the AirTags. Yeah. So I want to go in and get some AirTags, but I kind of like might that. might buy a phone. I kind of <laughs> like that purple phone. I'll be honest. That was a really beautiful purple. I saw uh, an iJustine video. I was like, she's right. It is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, it comes with 128 gigs. I feel like 128 is kind of perfect for what I need. Um, but I use my phone so much that, you know, it seems like it might be worth the money. But then I'm irritated that I have a phone that's perfectly good, except for the fact that they skimped on storage and now I'm to, having to suffer the repercussions. But anyway, we've gone on long enough. People want to want to hear about the new uh, MacBook Pros. So let's talk about MacBook Pros. Now, I want to preface this story with the headline says redesigned MacBook Pros could arrive in July with next gen M2 chips. Now, we don't know if they're going to be called the M2, okay? They could be called the M1X, which is what we have previously heard. It seems like the M2 moniker 
is what they could be called, but they also could be called the M1X. We just don't know yet, but it's going to be the more powerful version of the M1, whatever Apple ends up calling that. We're going to get these at WWDC. I'm almost I'm almost 100% convinced, and, and here's why. So Apple has their September event, right, where they talk about iPhones, and they're almost certainly not going to announce new computers then. And so they need to announce these computers sometime before that, and WWDC is what makes the most sense. And only that, they announced their M1 transition at last year's WWDC. So it makes a lot of sense to have them talk about new computers at WWDC. And I think we're going to have uh, M4, excuse me, <laughs> I hope we see M4. That would actually be incredible. <laughs> a 14-inch M1 or M2 and a 16-inch M2. Let me hop into the story here. I'm going I'm going off script, and I'm missing some details. So let me just read part of the story. Uh, the M1 chip just made its way into the new iMac and iPad Pro. You already know that. But Apple's already hard at work on its successor. According to a new report from Nikkei Asia, mass production of the M2 chip is already underway. It's expected to debut as soon as early July, initially for use in a redesigned MacBook arriving in the second half of the year. Apple announced its transition away from Intel to its own Apple Silicon at last year's WWDC. We already talked about that, which indicates that Apple may make the announcement for these MacBook Pros at this year's WWDC. Almost certainly they will. The question I have is, are we also going to see the, uh, the M2 iMac Pro? I think we're getting a more powerful iMac. I still, I, I still haven't made my peace with the fact that we only are going to have an M1 iMac. I think that they have something else up their sleeve in that regard. Now, you may be wondering, what are we going to get in these M2 MacBook Pros? Well, we've got some details here for you. Okay, First and foremost, a new form factor Okay, with bigger screens. So the 14-inch and the 16-inch screen sizes. It's also been reported that Apple is going to kill off the LED touch bar, which never caught on and has never been useful in in any way (laughs) and has been an utter disaster (laughs) and a catastrophic error on Apple's part. (laughs) And everyone knows it. I'm just I'm just saying what everyone knows and everyone (laughs) agrees with. It is completely useless. So why not just kill it off and put mechanical keys that we'll all actually love? Okay. It's going to sport a fancy mini LED display. Dude, this is huge. This might... I, 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 I tweeted... Actually, I forgot to tweet. I forgot to tweet, Lewis. Oh, no. <laughs> Let me just read you the tweet. M2 I forgot MacBook to remind Pros, you to tweet. You forgot to remind me. I blame you. <laughs> M2 MacBook Pros are right around the corner, and we, will, and we will have a return to greatness. That's the tweet. I'm tweeting it right now, <laughs> live on the air. A return to greatness. To greatness. These, are the com- these are the computers we've been waiting for. We got the supercharged M2, and get this, we got all the ports that we've been wanting. Almost all. No USB-A. That would send me to the plastic surgeon for nip reconstruction surgery, but we're close. It's the only thing that we don't have is USB-A. But you guys may have heard about this, uh, this leak that happened last week, I think. I'm not familiar with this hacker group. They're called Revil. R capital E V I L. Good one, guys. Actually, don't hack me. Everything's cool. <laughs> but uh, they stole some schematics from quantum computers. Have you guys heard anything about this? It's quantum computers, mm-hmm. right? They, I think, I it was digging around in that system a couple of years ago. Digging around in what system? I don't know if you want to admit that on the air. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are, are you part Where's of uh, Revil? Revil? Re- Revil? Yeah, so this this um, ransomware group called Revil hacked quantum computers, and they were demanding that either quantum computer... Well, first they were demanding that quantum computer pay them $50 million, or they were going to start leaking some of the schematics of the new MacBook Pros, which they had stolen from quantum, and they were going to start leaking details every day until they got the money that they wanted. I guess they've done this before. Quantum refused to pay. And so this group went to Apple with their palm out and started tapping their finger in their palm and said, pay up, TC. And interestingly enough, 
some of this leaked stuff has been removed from, I think, Revil's websites. I'll have to look to see exactly where it's been removed from. But something has happened where it seems like they've withdrawn a lot of these schematics that they were leaking. So did Apple pay them off? We don't know. But we did get a look at the schematics. In fact, uh, let's see here. Uh, I think Mac Rumors put together a... Yes, they put together an image of these computers based upon the schematics, I believe. And this is going to be the right side of the computer. And as you can see, we have MagSafe. <laughs> MagSafe, two USB-C uh, slash Thunderbolt slots on the side, and then a head jack on the... I'm sorry, this is the left-hand side of the computer. On the right side saying, of the yeah, computer... So MagSafe is on the left-hand side, right? Yes, it's, it's the left-hand side. Where it is, yeah. And uh, and then on the right hand side, I don't think we have a picture of this, but we are going to get uh, a USB C slash Thunderbolt port, an HDMI port. Which, you know, I don't really get the fervor around HDMI port. I have literally never used HDMI, but people seem to be excited about that. And then the not a pro port itself. What what uh, 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 Phil Schiller said was not a pro port. The SD card reader slot on the right <laughs> side. It's a return to greatness, Lewis. You can take that headline. Just give me credit. I'm glad I like that. Return to greatness. It's a great headline, isn't it? And it's 100% true. If you get the power of the M2 with all of these usable ports, usable ports, not <laughs> Apple's vision of what usability is going to be in 10 years from now because you can plug in dongles everywhere. But MagSafe, one of the best inventions ever in technology, SD card slot, a, a slot that I would I had used a lot, and now I have all these dang uh, dongles everywhere that allow me to offload my SD cards onto my MacBook Pro because every camera now uses SD card slots, so or SD cards, I should say. So this is turning out to be a really exciting, really exciting update. And I think what is going to happen is they're going to announce it at WWDC, and then we will probably get the release later on, you know, like they're doing with the iPad Pro, and uh, and uh, what else is releasing, Lewis? <laughs> Apple TV. The Apple TV 4K. Thank you. iMac. And the and the iMac. So the, we'll have an announcement at WWDC, and then probably more of an unveiling hopefully on the transition and, and what's going on with the transition to uh, the M1s but uh, to quote a uh, an iconic movie character things have escalated quickly <laughs> Apple is moving to M1s and they have been well you all don't need to hear me say it they've been unbelievable powerhouses I mean I, I never would have imagined that Apple would come out with a chip that would destroy anything that Intel has to offer and be so insanely powerful, and then be iterating so fast. One year after M1, we're expecting a big transition to either M2 or M1X or something that is going to just be, it's going to be like that uh, TDK commercial where that guy's sitting in front of the uh, television, <laughs> right? And he's sitting in the, boy, I, t I might have taken it classic. too, I might have taken it too far back there, Lewis. I just uh, <laughs> alienated 85%. There's this ad where this guy's sitting in a chair, and he presses play on the tape deck, and the music is just so powerful that it's like this hurricane force wind starts blowing his hair, and it's like flopping. And then he gets blown out of his easy chair because the power was too great to wield. <laughs> and that's gonna be the M2. You're gonna feel like um, you're gonna feel like the Dark Lord Sauron himself with the One Ring just <laughs> cutting people down. The question is though, do you get the the MacBook Pro, and how much is the MacBook Pro gonna be? Are they gonna up the price? Hopefully not. Or the uh, the iMac, which I hope they're going to add the M1 X or the M2 too, because it seems apropos vis-a-vis. -vis. Ergo. Oh, my god! Did you see that uh, Macworld had a really interesting story this week about so speculating what the, the M2 chip might look like? Uh, and no. What was that? Look like? Well, they got, you know, they're talking about how um, the M1 was based on the A14 but it doubled up the number of you know high performance cores and mm -hmm. doubled up the GPU cores, and so they they're speculating that the M2 and and all the science seemed to be pointing towards is, is they're going to double up the high performance cores in the M2, oh, so they'll have goodness. eight high performance um, 
eight high performance uh, cores and four lower performance cores. So 12 CPU cores altogether. 12. 12 CPU cores is insane. I can't wait, uh, man. And this thing is going to be like a massive, you know, they're saying it's a huge die because it's a system on a chip. So it's going to be a big, fat, honking, super powerful, crazy chip. Crazy chip. And it's going to be extremely efficient. It's just going to be... It's just gonna be it's 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 ex it's exciting. What else can you say? It's gonna be a really exciting update, and I'm definitely getting something. I just want to see what we have in store, and whether it's gonna be a MacBook Pro or the iMac. Because here's the thing: I mean, I love having an iMac. I love I love having an iMac, but they're so much more expensive power wise than an an. Or I love having a MacBook Pro. I should say. They're so much more expensive power-wise than an iMac. You can get something that's far more powerful for probably a smaller price if you go with an iMac and you're willing to forego, for, forego the battery. Although you do lose some some convenience, but we're not going anywhere anyway, so you know, why does it matter? So there's that very exciting update right around the corner. Uh, the WWDC keynote, I believe, Lewis, correct me if I'm wrong here. Is it June? I'm looking at my. Uh, my calendar June right 7. Now. Is it June? No. Oh, wait. That's okay. Yeah, that's Monday, June 7th. I was going to say that's a Friday, but I was looking at May. So June 7th. So right around the corner. I mean, April is almost over. So we have like five weeks left, six April's weeks left. Almost ready to start. What? Yeah. What? Uh, I mean, May. May, May, uh, 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 May is almost. I'm ready all confused now. I can't even keep track of what month it is. I don't know what day it is. <laughs> I can't. I for sure can't tell you what day. Uh, you know, June seventh is. Although, yeah, it's a Monday, but I couldn't figure it out in my well, head. Not all of us can be rain men, <laughs> Lewis. <laughs> uh, I need. I need You're to more... hire somebody to retrieve things from my memory. <laughs> all right. Well, before we uh, before we continue, let me just give a quick little plug. If you have, if you're planning on getting a AirTag. You're planning on getting a new iPhone. Maybe you're planning on picking up one of those new Macs. If I may, let me suggest that you also pick up a set of Colt Cloth. Now, this is a product <laughs> that I launched. I got them right here. This is the uh, the Colt Cloth Duo. This thing is an absolute animal. If I would say the the equivalent, if you were talking in Apple terms, this would be an M10. Most other cleaning cloths are like Intel Celeron. Okay. And then here you have the M10, the M10 chip. And you said it's made out of animals? <sighs> oh, I'm on the wrong camera view. Uh, it's not made out of animals. It <laughs> is an animal. There are no animal oh. byproducts. Oh. This is this is cutting edge oh, synthetic technology. So I call this the, uh, the Colt Cloth Duo because it has a long fiber on one side. Whew, that fiber, it's just, it's just grabbing onto my finger as I touch it. It's crazy. You can feel it in action. Like it's a got gecko. It's short. It actually is a lot like a gecko. I could probably throw this thing to the wall and it would stick. It's got the short fiber on the other side, so it's great for dual applications. So if you want to spritz a little uh, cleaning solution or or even just a little bit of water, then you can use this on your screen and it won't completely absorb all the solution so that it goes away entirely like this. The long side would, but the long side is an absolute destroyer for like really gummed up keyboards or screens or anything else really where you just want to have a ton of cleaning power and you're not necessarily uh, concerned about using a lot of solution because this side, it's so long, it will just soak up the solution. The Colt Cloth is the best way that I have found to keep your Mac sparkling clean, your iPhone, your glasses, your sunglasses. They are made from a special fiber that goes through a, a very... Um, uh, well, a very powerful process that breaks down the fiber, which drastically includes the drastically um, increases the surface area of the fiber. So it just makes it its capability to clean much more powerful than than normal cleaning cloths. And you'll see when you wipe it ac across any one of your gadgets, your glasses, just nothing is left behind sparkling glass and metal. I use these every single day. They really are incredible. They work so well. I keep them everywhere. I keep them in my car. I have them in my house. Colt Command Center, I use them on absolutely everything. These long fibers are really great at going down into like crevices. So if you have a case on your iPhone, they will reach down into that crack around your iPhone and pick up everything that's in there or your lenses because you have like that crease where the glass meets the actual case. 
it will reach down into those cracks and just pull everything out. If you're interested in getting some for yourself with your new Apple product, head on over to coltcloth.co. I haven't even been showing this the whole time, have I? What am I, a noob? <laughs> coltcloth.co. Coltcloth.co. Use code coltcast at checkout, and you'll get yourself a free carry cloth, which we just launched a little while ago. I don't have one here which are perfect for carrying around and cleaning your sunglasses, your glasses, your lenses on the go, even your iPhone, at cultcloth.co. Okay. Where are we going from chicken feet? Oh, I haven't tried them on chicken feet, although those chickens would have the cleanest feet in all the land, Lewis. Sparkling, sure. clean chicken feet. Hey, did you want to plug the giveaway real fast, Lewis or Leander? I have it right here. All right, yeah. dude. Thanks I remember. That up. Way You're to welcome. Go. You're welcome, you want to do it, Leander. Well, I it's... actually can't remember what it is we're giving away. Um, <laughs> it's a, you know what it is? It's a, it's a, a Wonder Boom, Wonder, a Wonder Boom speaker, Wonder Boom. A Wonder Boom. That's right, of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, uh, you know, little little uh, portable Bluetooth speaker, a little bit bigger than a, uh, what's this thing called? HomePod, HomePod Mini. Mini. Yep. Uh, it's. But it's also, you know, it's completely portable and durable. I mean, it, for crying out loud, it floats. It's dust proof. It's Holy waterproof. Boy. It's, uh, and it, you know, you take it out. You, you, you can listen to your music outside wherever you go all summer long. It's like the perfect summer speaker. We're giving away one. You just go to the Cult of Mac homepage. You can find it. Uh, you, you, it's well hidden there. It says enter to win a wonderful Wonder Boom 2 speaker from Ultimate Ears. Uh, You'd have to search for that, I suppose. <laughs> I put a link but, in the uh, chat too, and we'll we'll put oh, a link yeah, in good. the show notes too, so people can check it out. Yeah, we. So uh, I've been using uh, these Ultimate Ear speakers for years now. I love them. I use them every day. Uh, take them in the shower. Listen to some podcasts in the shower. Take oh. them if I ever left my house and went to a beach, or I, I've taken it to like a swimming pool. Uh, you can take it anywhere, and uh, they sound good and they're fun and they're. Uh, very, very reliable and durable. Yeah, they sound dang good. So I will put a link in the show notes, and if there's one in the chat if you guys want to enter to win one for free. Dude, you might as well try to win one. I mean, why not? What do you got to lose? Yeah, it's free. Just go in there and uh, and enter to, to win. Okay, let's just quickly uh, breeze through these um, financial call details, and then we'll do a Apple stock update. Uh, <laughs> God, dude... Let's skip the stock update. <sighs> people want to hear it. <laughs> well, let's ask people. Are people actually interested in Apple financials? I find them fascinating. I mean, and it's also like a, you know, it's an unparalleled view into into what's going on in the Apple ecosystem. Yeah, um, I find them interesting too. I just kind of wonder if anyone else actually does. But I mean, it makes it the call. What, what's that? Did mm-hmm. I listen to the call? No, I did yeah. not. Oh, I knew you would. Then Leander, <laughs> did you? No, I didn't listen to the call. Oh, yes, yes. So so it's completely fascinating. Everybody's fascinated. (laughs) I did listen to the call. Uh, Yeah, it was – honestly, like, did you read the press release? You you probably read the press release, right? Apple's press release is like, oh, yeah, you know, we made, uh, you know, 54% more than ever before. And, um, you know, it's like just an astonishing amount of money. So many billions they're tossing around. Uh, Yeah. it, it actually, it seemed like they just downplayed it this time, you know, like the, the last three or four quarters, it's been like, you know, shocking amount of money, shocking amount of money, shocking amount of money. And this week it's like, oh, even bigger, shocking amount of money. It's just like, yeah, well, we did okay. They just kind of, <laughs> they, they, they shrugged it off. And it was, oh my God. All right. Well, Leon, are you taking this? Uh, sure, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, I mean, the third highest revenue quarter ever, <laughs> um, and this is in a sleepy spring quarter, and it's like Lewis said, mind-boggling numbers. I mean, they made what is it, twenty-three, twenty-four million in a pro- uh, billion, sorry, billion, billion yeah. in profit, and that was what uh, that's what Facebook made in 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 revenue. Re- wow. Revenue was revenue was forty-seven point nine. Oh, wait a minute. Ah, uh, sorry. No, I'm sorry. Uh, strike that. It's been stricken from the record. Where's the? You mean forty-seven point nine billion in revenue from another... iPhones? Yeah, that's what that was, right? Is that what you're gonna yeah, say? Just, yeah, I guess. Mac. I don't know. These notes are a little anemic. I can't really that tell. Was what's going on that was just from the Mac. That was just from the Mac. Yeah, and they're just they're just mind-boggling sums of money. Mind-boggling. Um, and uh, yeah, you know the interesting thing is uh, we 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 did a roundup. Or Lewis did a roundup yesterday. 
Lewis and Ed um, of the uh, from the phone call, the five interesting, you know, five points um, that, that that stood out from the from the call, and, and so we'll, you know we'll, we'll talk about three of them here. I mean, it was really the, the the quarter for the Mac. You know, the Mac broke all records. This is the biggest selling quarter for the Mac ever, and obviously this is because the the new the, the new M1 chip. I mean, there was so much pent up demand here that people went out and bought them in droves. Um, it's you know it wasn't back to school. It wasn't the holiday shopping season. But it resulted in 9.1 billion in max sales. 9.1 billion. That's a 70% increase from the same quarter last year. Um, and it doesn't reveal. Apple doesn't reveal that the units sold, but it was um, amounted to, like Lewis said earlier, 47.9 billion worth of sales, up from 29 billion last year. And these are just, I don't know, they're just mind-boggling numbers. They're so huge, so massive. I mean, that must be how many max is that? I mean, it's 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 tens of millions, isn't it? It's shocking. It's shocking to think about. And uh, you know, they it was up a bunch from last quarter, uh, and last quarter was amazing. If you if you look at the chart, it's like it's literally like a a, a rocket going off. It's shocking. Yeah. I'm amazed, and <laughs> I mean, you know, they sold a lot of Macs last year uh, just because of lockdown, right? Everybody working from home and everything else. But then they let this these things loose, and and <laughs> they sell even more. I mean, it's just <laughs> unbelievable. And these are these are just the low end, you know, of the Mac line as well. Like, you know, if, if WWDC, if 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 Erfan's right, and and we got new MacBook Pros and new Pro level iMacs, I mean, there's going to be another huge bump next season. Oh yeah, I mean, there's this, a this lot kind of, of people waiting for those. Yeah, yeah. the end. So, uh, <laughs> I I don't know. Uh, one of the things that they said was like next next quarter might be a, a little bit not as amazing because they you know there's a little bit of supply constraint you know like it sounds like they they basically <laughs> used every chip they could get their hands on but uh <laughs> oh my god it's just crazy yeah the, the chip supply uh thing is going to come bite apple finally yeah it seems like it's finally starting to affect them i think mark german actually just tweeted about that uh today oh, like really? two hours ago like it's finally starting to affect apple and they're they're having a harder time getting chips and then of course there's iphone 12 which had a satisfaction rate that's like 99.9999 percent and uh i don't i don't know what the increase was but the increase in iphone sales was of, was of course also enormous and so last night I was thinking, oh, here we go, baby. We had two <laughs> record quarters in a row. Two record quarters in a row. Now, for those of you that uh, don't follow the show, you should. And uh, we all we're also on iTunes. You can download the audio there, subscribe there. But uh, I, I have been on this what I call an uh, hashtag Apple stock adventure because back in March I purchased about a hundred thousand dollars worth of Apple stock. Okay, and I'm not talking about it to brag. I just thought it would be a fun adventure to go on together. And see how the value increases as time goes on. And I wouldn't say that I've been thrilled with Apple's performance, um, especially in light of some other companies like uh, Tesla and then the um, the imaginary meme-based Dogecoin, which I am also now <laughs> invested in. Uh, oh, Do no. Doge is going to the moon, and Apple is uh, still in Cupertino, uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe on the border of Oakland. But uh, uh, the stock... Last quarter, after the record profits, I was like, here we go, baby. And then it, it plummeted, I think, 6%. I was thoroughly confused. I was like, this world makes no sense to me anymore. You have Dogecoin, an imaginary crypto based on a dog <laughs> meme, you know, up like 10,000%. And Apple, after having a record quarter, is down like 5 or 6%. And then this quarter, last night, I was like, finally, here it goes. Another record quarter. In, in, in a quarter where nothing is going on, there's no Christmas season, there's no back to school. I mean, it's just a ho-hum quarter. They post even more record profits and the best max sales that they've literally ever had. And so last night, the stock price in aftermarket trading went up 6%. And I was like, here we go. It's it's going to the moon. I'm, I'm buckling in, ready for liftoff. And then today... <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. What are we at right now? Really? Uh, well, it's actually recovered. So last night, it, it jumped up to 135, almost 136. And today it closed at 133.48. So we're down again. We're down again today. I just don't How know. How can it go down? How well, can it go down? I don't know. What is wrong with people? 
they're worried it's not it's not sustainable you know like that's what that this is what they're worried wall street's worried about is that they, they can't keep it up but i don't know you know a two trillion company to you know that saw 50 percent growth in the last quarter um you know none of the usual rules apply to apple do they or they oh this and, and in this particular period of time i just I, you know the stock price doesn't really i don't know it doesn't always reflect the um i think there's people sort of selling on what do you do you sell on the buy on the rumors sell on the news that yep. kind of thing yep it's just been going flat and and i guess for me i was thinking well i i get the sentiment that apple can't keep it going that's what happened last quarter oh apple can't keep it going what are they going to do next clearly they can't keep manufacturing profits like they have been but then they do it again and yeah. It's the the picture of what Apple's doing is is really clear to me now. It's like they are improving iterative, iteratively all of their businesses. So they're not they don't have like this home run item right now, but everything is growing. So Mac business is almost doubled, their wearables business is almost doubled, their their um their subscriptions or their services businesses is growing like crazy. It's way bigger than the Mac business is. In fact, yeah, now I think it goes iPhone. The iPad business almost doubled this quarter. So you have iPhones growing hugely, iPads are right under that growing hugely, services under that growing hugely, Macs growing hugely, and so they've done it again for this second for this for this I guess we're in the th- what quarter are we in the second quarter? Is the second quarter? This would be their Q3, quarter. right? Q3. Okay, so they've they've done it again. So now clearly they have proved that they have a plan to increase profitability. Still nothing. Still nothing. So if you're curious where I am monetarily, I'm pulling it up right now. So I invested just about a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. And and I always oh, no. I I always um want to give you just a little bit of insight into how I made this purchase. Cause when people think about buying stock, they're like, Oh, you just bought stock, you bought a hundred thousand dollars. No, I, I I bought it in several buys. So I, I have various different price points that I purchased at, some of which were before the split, which that was the rocket ride. Holy moly, it was just going up like crazy before the split. So my current investment is worth one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars, two hundred twenty-one dollars. Did I say dollars twice? I may have, but with returns this good, I think I'm allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so today's profit, I made five hundred thirty-two dollars, and <laughs> I'm up. I guess. Well, it says I'm up. Well, you're twenty-five k. That's not bad. It's not terrible. It's not terrible. <laughs> Oh, it, it, it could be worse. It could have been like my uh, my AMC investment, which I bought and, and quickly plummeted, you know, 50%. So um, it seems like it's still a decent investment. But it's it's pe- people – so we've we've talked about this some on um, Coltcast Off Topic. It's like the, de- demo- the democratization of trading. Now you can get on Robinhood. You can get on all these different apps, and you can just trade for free – which has opened up trading to like the common man and there's no barrier to entry. You can get in and trade as little or as much as you want with fractional shares. You don't even have to buy a whole stock. You can buy $5 worth of a stock. And so you just have a lot of really uninformed investors now making purchases like yours truly. I might be yeah, the king. I'm, like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not pointing any fingers. I'm saying that you have people like me in there now just buying stuff based on emotion and looking for really insane returns, like which is one of the reasons why Dogecoin is <laughs> well. The other, the other going way huge. Thing about Apple's, Apple stock is they've they've retired a whole bunch of stock. Like I saw a chart yesterday. I think uh, Horace Diddy put it out. Um, you know, they did ninety ninety billion dollars worth of stock buybacks, and the amount of stock has decreased by a significant amount. Really, they so also been... increased their dividend. Um, I think to twenty two cents per share from. I don't know, like seventeen cents right. or something. So, so now the the the, the it, it is kind of weird getting dividends from Apple. Like, it, it's strange. Like once or twice a year, I'll get like this huge chunk of money from Apple. They'll give me like I, I think one quarter they gave me like two grand. You know, it's so weird to see Apple do that. That all of a sudden this money just appears in my account. It's like thanks, the DC. Yeah, shareholder profits go back to the shareholders. Yeah, not very much of it though. That's for sure. <laughs> Twenty-two cents. Give me a break. I think Coke gives like five percent <laughs> dividends, uh, huh? and Apple isn't nearly isn't nearly that high. So there you there you go. There is your Apple stock update. I'm holding on. I did think about selling off my entire position and putting it all into Dogecoin, which, oh, dude, <laughs> I was thinking. Sensible. <laughs> 
I, I was seriously considering um, back when Doge had spiked to like eight cents and then dropped back down to like three or four cents. I was on the verge of liquidating part of my Palantir position and putting it into Doge. I was going to put about 5K into Doge. And I was on the cusp of pressing buy. But I was like, no, this is really irresponsible. My Palantir is down right now. I, I, I tossed in 500 bucks on AMC because I was like, oh, we'll see what happens. And I lost half of it. So I was like, I can't just keep throwing money away like this. And then there was the Apple option that I lost $700 on. I'm like, I can't just keep throwing money away. I, I got to be more <laughs> responsible. So I just left it alone. And then Doge shot up to 40 cents. So that that investment probably would have been worth, I don't know, that five thousand dollar investment would now be worth thirty thousand, forty forty thousand dollars, and I think Doge is going up. I, I think it's going to a dollar. It may even go beyond a dollar. But <laughs> remember, I'm not a financial uh, consultant, and Please. my strat my strategy is often <laughs> buy high, sell low. So keep that in mind whenever you hear me uh, take this as advice. <laughs> whenever you hear me talk about investments, just keep all that in mind. Although my Apple position so far is doing pretty nice. All right, let's wrap up with this story. Uh, iOS 14.5, Lewis, bring some really fantastic new features that people are probably aware of, but we should at least talk about them. Yes, uh, finally came out uh, Monday after what seemed like months of testing. Uh, iOS 14.5 and iPad OS 14.5 uh, brought a ton of new features, including... Um, unlocking the iPhone with an Apple Watch while wearing a mask, which I have yet to have to use, but I hear it's fantastic. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's life-changing. I That's what I've heard. I've heard it's it from multiple it, people. It works when it works, and when it doesn't work, it, it doesn't work. But, you know, like <laughs> my, 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 mine was really inconsistent. When it does work, it's great. Really? I and would say mine recently. works probably 90% of the time. Huh. Mine, mine didn't work for a long time, and I don't know why. Huh. I rarely I have problems with mine. I haven't been out since I uh, downloaded the thing. So, and uh, you know, got the got the vaccine now. So, am I going to wear a mask ever again? Anyway, I'm not sure. I guess I'm going <laughs> no, to. Now you have to wear. Now you have to wear three. <laughs> Don't want your vaccine uh, germs everywhere. Let's see. So, uh, the OS updates also brought app tracking transparency, which everybody calls ATT, which I find really confusing because I always think of you know. AT&T. AT&T. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so app tracking transparency is this controversial change. It makes it harder for apps to track users for targeted advertising. It doesn't, well, it doesn't make it harder. It, it makes uh, it makes the app developers ask you, do you want to be tracked across other websites and other apps? And so, uh, you know, this has been a, a huge big deal. I mean, I'm sure everybody's probably up to speed on it but if you don't know i mean that's what it's all about it's, it's about giving you information about what apps are doing with your data in the background and who they're selling it to or and giving you the you know front and center of the option to say hey uh, i want this to happen or i don't um facebook is enraged by it a lot of advertisers are terrified of it um you know big advertising agencies and uh, you know it might it might shake up the industry. Who knows? Um, but yeah, I gotta say uh, again, I, I've I only uh, I waited until the thing was released. I didn't ever use the betas, but I have still yet to see one of these pop ups that says uh, you know this app wants to track me. Apparently, Apple uh, told the developers like, look, you can't be tracking people. Um, un- you have to comply with this. You have to update your app to show the the pop up, but. If you haven't done that yet, you can't be tracking people, right? I mean, that's huh. I, I probably didn't explain that very well, but like, you're, you're, <laughs> it's a little you're, bit. yeah, it's it's well, it's a little bit confusing, right? Well, like, I think people people are expecting like to see, I think see these pop ups. Oh my god, you know, Facebook's tracking you, Twitter's tracking you, Instagram's tracking you, but it depends on the developer to update their app to um to be in compliance with this new policy. So we'll start to see the pop ups as the developers update their apps, as third party update developers oh, update their apps. Oh, okay. So um, it's even though it's baked into the OS, and in fact you can turn it all off in one fell swoop. Like if you want, you know, if you want to, if you want to stop all um, uh, apps tracking you, you have to go into general settings, privacy, tracking, and then there's a toggle that you know turns it all off. So no apps can track you at all. But you know, like I was thinking about this, and 
it seems to me that some apps you might want to let track you. You know, like, like I, I got one from, huh? Sorry, I think you're about to answer my question. What? Well, I, yeah, like what? Well, I got one from Miriam Webster, you know, the, the, um, and, <laughs> and they had a, the, the dictionary app, which of course, you know, I use all the time. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, I knew only Lewis would get that joke. Uh, <laughs> it, um, you know, it had a pretty good message saying, you know, if we, this app is free, but we depend on advertising. And, um, you know, we, we, we use targeted advertising to give you better ads. And, and I was kind of like, ah, you know, and, and I said, you know, please consider leaving it on if, you know, if you want to help support us. And so that, that touched my heart. I had a little tear oh. in my eye and I was like, okay, oh. you can track me, you know, as I use my iPhone, but Facebook, no, no. Well, I haven't seen one for Facebook yet. Facebook, Facebook's going to be coming out in a couple of weeks. Like they said, I think in, I, I, what was the, the, Several weeks, I think, was the phrase they used. Well, their Instagram one is out because I just got it yesterday, and it was like, please okay. help keep, please help Instagram stay free. And I was like, God, oh, come on, <laughs> you're not going to charge for Instagram. Give me a break. So did I'm you not, say yay or nay? Hell no for Instagram. I turn that off right away. <laughs> I'll turn off all Facebook tracking. I I almost completely stopped using Facebook because when I found out they were doing experiments on their users and trying to affect their emotions i was like dude this is like some some evil bs that you guys are doing i am not going to be a part of it i signed up for this website to see pictures of my friends and their kids i'm not trying to participate in some kind of weird uh evil scientific emotional uh a manipulation, manipulation experiment scheme. yeah no way <laughs> I love you got, you're getting shut happy. off i mean maybe for merriam webster i would leave it on actually i think that 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 honest and heartfelt plea please sir we need money yeah, to eat I, I feel like that actually works but not for zuckerberg not 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 for zuckerborg <laughs> we need your data we need your data uh, resist resistance <laughs> is futile that's getting turned off right away yeah, well, they're, they're, they're definitely worried about that, we'll, and we'll see. I mean, they made boatloads of money. They had their financial results yesterday, and they, they I think they doubled their um, their money they're making for advertising. And there's some indication, I think someone, I saw someone saying that this actually might help Facebook. They, they, they kind of changed their tune, and they were sort of saying, well, oh, no, after all, this isn't going to hurt us. This is going to help us. Um, and because it makes the ads more valuable, actually, on the Facebook property itself, on the Facebook app, huh. which... Uh, does that make sense? I guess it does in a way. And anyway, so there, there's. I think it's not entirely clear that there may be actually. It may actually help them in some ways, um, you know, instead of instead of uh, instead of hurting them. But it was kind of like scary how much tracking they were doing. I mean, you know, the Facebook app was pulling. It could see what apps you used, what you searched for, where you went. I mean, the amount of data they're pulling was was just was is just you know is insane. And. Tim Cook tweeted out a video yesterday that I thought was, you know, made the case pretty well for privacy is that, you know, that, that you don't know this is happening. This is happening without your permission and without your knowledge. Yeah. And this is being sold, sold to data brokers. All we're doing is we're empowering people. And I find that a compelling message. You know, I find it, you know, that it's true. Um, you know, you should know what's been going on. This device is spying on you all the time. And, and, the, and, and that data is getting sent and to build profiles for, you know, against without your knowledge. And I, you know, I think, uh, they're right that they should, you know, we, we, sh we should have a more informed uh, whether you want to turn this on or off or, or not. I totally agree. I think one of Apple's biggest contributions to today's digital citizen is their privacy stuff and yeah. locking your phone down so that only you can access data and making you aware of what is going on in your digital life. Because, you know, using Facebook is like eating a sausage. You don't know what's in the sausage. <laughs> They can put whatever they want in there, and you're just going to eat it, and then you'll later find out that they put in, you know, 80% uh, pig lips and, and, and toxic shoe leather or something. So I think yeah. it's good that they're giving you the option to at least know what's going on, and yeah, yeah. The, the companies will have it, to deal with it accordingly. And it's about the only company in the whole entire Silicon Valley that has a strong policy about this kind of stuff, you know? I mean, almost everybody else wants to track everything you do. Yeah. Google, Facebook, all these free services, Cult of Mac. <laughs> um. Don't forget those scumbags in 9 to 5, Mac. They're tracking everything. I disavow. I'm not sure if that's real. Don't sue me. <laughs> yeah. Clean up. I, anyway, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, well, let's not get into this. Okay. <laughs> well, we've got a few trackers we got to clean up. A lot of it's legacy, you know, like yeah. we, we're, we're, yeah. it's running trackers of stuff for services we don't even use anymore. Anyway, 
All right. Well, let's cut that out. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna clean up our act. Don't worry. We're 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 not gonna track. Don't worry. We're gonna we're gonna shut all that stuff down. Uh, let's see here. Is there anything else that uh, we needed to announce here? Oh, well, we should at least mention, Lewis, that uh, in order to get some of these features to work, you need to make sure that you have uh, the newest version of iOS on your iPhone. But you also need to make sure that you have Watch OS seven point four to oh, use right. the new mask friendly Face ID feature. Which I absolutely love. I wish this would have come out a year ago because yeah, that right. would have been a lot That's more funny. useful. This is where we're going to get rid of masks. Yeah, I wonder now why it, it took them out. so long. Why? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's really well thought through, so maybe that's why. And it has to do with security, so maybe they, they really wanted to test it to make sure that it uh, it works. But, dude, it's just, if you haven't used it yet, it's worth getting an Apple Watch just for this feature. If you're going to be wearing a mask, <gasps> get wow. an Apple Watch. It really is worth it. Because now when you're out doing your grocery store shopping and stuff, you're not going to have to keep entering in your passcode every single time you want to look at your grocery list. You just, you know, flick it up to unlock. And just like Face ID, it unlocks, except it just taps your wrist a couple times to let you know that your iPhone has been unlocked. Because Apple says that someone else could unlock your phone when you have this feature enabled. And you do have to enable it. It's not turned on by default. And so if someone picks up your phone and tries to unlock it, if you're within your Apple Watch range, it will just unlock and your your Apple Watch will just do it for them. It doesn't it doesn't really need to even look at your face, I don't think. As long as you have a mask on, I think it just says, Oh, okay, well let's just use the Apple Watch. But it is so unbelievably useful to just have it unlock automatically without having to use your face. It's 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 worth three hundred bucks or five hundred bucks, depending <laughs> on which Apple Watch you get. To, uh, and uh, and the new Apple Watch is uh, Series Six is going on sale quite often these days, and it's it's one of my favorite products that Apple makes now. The Apple Watch it's just gotten to be so good e- ever since they have like the always on display. That was the key thing. Now that it's always on, and you can like see it at night when you're sleeping if you wake up or something, it uh, has made it an invaluable Swiss Army knife for me. I really love it. Although the one thing I don't like is the fact that it is always activating Siri when I don't want it to, as you've probably heard several times during this broadcast, I think it's happened probably four times already where I'll be talking and I'll look down and my Apple watch is just transcribing everything that I've said and sending it to the NSA for uh, analysis. (laughs) Uh, All right. Well, I think that is all we have guys. We just burned through all of our stories and it only took us two hours hours. oh my god (laughs) so there you go we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up there that's all the cult cast we have for you guys this week but if you want to come say hi to us we're all on twitter i'm at airfon e-r-f-o-n lewis is at lewis wallace l caney it just happened again do you hear my watch it just freaking happened again l caney is (laughs) at l caney this has been the cult cast the best 30 plus minute Apple conversation you're going to hear all week long. New episodes of the Coolcast come out every Thursday night. Thanks for listening. I almost forgot what I was saying. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Shout out to all the people that just joined and uh, have caught the best part of the show, some say, which is the ending. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God it's over. (laughs) This is many people's favorite part. (laughs) Anything um, profound to say, Leander, during the final moments of the show? No. um, Nothing. What are you going to think about people listening to this as they wake up to uh, pre order their stuff tomorrow morning, bright and early? Their stock or their stuff? pre-order their stuff you know oh you start yeah it's like you're sitting there you know it's 4 30 in the morning you're like trying to figure out how to do it you're listening to the cult cast it's great it's great it'll wake you right up i'm sure (laughs) or you'll fall back asleep unintentionally and miss the pre-order forever (laughs) arriving in june (laughs) all right guys i'm hovering towards the end stream it's gonna happen any moment here comes the drum roll arf